I was paid to test a game. I think they were really testing me. Written by Severe Actuary 9562. Remember to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. Now let's get started. A lot of people said they were envious of my job. It was easy to understand why. I played video games for a living. The envy of hordes of teenagers around the globe. I don't mean the monotonous slog of testing games in early development, either. No, I actually played them for a living. Two years ago, I was one of the top competitive base night players in the world. It was truly an incredible time for gamers. Everybody was playing base night, and I mean everybody. Sure, before base night, esports was a thing. But after it, some players become bona fide celebrities. It was insane. Unfortunately for me, I was not one of those people. Although I had a small following and made a little bit of money from tournaments, I was a nobody. Once the hype died down, the money dried up. And this happened to a lot of us. And that's why it was such a big deal when we got offers. I thought maybe it was a prank. The email said I had been handpicked to participate in the testing of a new game, Battle Guardian. I had never heard of the developer, but in the email they mentioned how they had secured a sizable amount of funding from various investors who believed in the project. At first, I thought the whole thing sounded kind of, well, trash. The developer said that Battle Guardian was the most intricate combat game ever. I was going to delete the email and forget about it. That was, until I saw the compensation. 30,000 with opportunities for bonuses. My live stream had long since fizzled out, but even when I had been pulling in hundreds of viewers a day, I only made a couple thousand, plus the winnings from the tournament I won last year were already wearing thin. This was a no-brainer. I signed onto Discord and joined one of the servers for high-level competitive players. Before I could even ask, I had my answer. People were already talking about the mysterious offer. After way too much digital chest pounding and trash talking, we found out that around 20 of us had been invited. Of course, all of us were high-level players, but it didn't seem like there was any rhyme or reason to the selection. Some of the rich players who had made it big from base night weren't interested, but others said they would participate just to see what the game was about. For some reason, the developer insisted we had to meet and play the game in person. I was only a couple hours away from LA where the office was, but they literally flew people out to test the game. Clearly money wasn't an object, and I guess having some of the world's best players to test your new game was an investment in quality. The building was kind of inconspicuous and not really what I expected. They didn't even have a logo on the front. I saw a few of the guys I knew from streaming, and we talked for a bit, all of us wondering what the deal was with this new game. A man with matted hair and eyes wired greeting us with a smile. Hey guys, good to meet you. I'm Zane. Welcome, welcome. He walked around, shaking hands and patting backs. He wore a casual Hawaiian shirt and skate shorts. He looked like a stereotypical game dev, one who had been up for one too many nights running solely off cappuccinos and energy shots. He showed us to the testing room. Immediately, the group sounded their amazement. The room looked less like an office building and more like a world-class lounge. There was even a small cafeteria we were told was complimentary. 
Large, spacious desks with premium equipment were placed around the room. Zane told us his primary focus was to make sure we felt right at home. After we all settled down, Zane directed our focus to a large screen that was presumably the Battle Guardian menu. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Battle Guardian, he proclaimed loudly and proudly as the game demo began to play. If the group was impressed by the room, our astonishment at the game itself was double that. What? Is this the new Unreal Engine? It looks like real life. The detail on the map is crazy. That must have taken years. The compliments went on for the next five minutes as the demo played out. Some of the guys thought it was pre-rendered footage, but Zane assured us that everything we had just seen was in-game. He told us this was the product of years of development, and the entire team was really happy they could finally unveil what they had been working on. We all took places at stations around the room, and set up our controllers and peripherals. Zane told us we would start off with something fun and play some competitive multiplayer matches against each other. We decided on a Battle Royale game mode, as that was what most of us were used to coming from Battle Night. I couldn't believe how realistic the game was. It was like they had thought of everything. I figured they must have been using AI tech, because if there were animations repeating, I couldn't tell. At the end of the first day, the group was ecstatic. We had played for hours, all of us competing to be the best. Zane congratulated us and wished us a good night. We would be back early tomorrow. The group excitedly poured into the gaming lounge when the doors opened. A few were trash-talking each other, boasting about how well they would do that day. Zane walked in cheerily. Hey everybody! Easy now, there will be time enough for competition later. Gesturing to those who had been arguing. Today, each of you will be testing the core feature of the game, generative combat. A murmur formed around the room, evidently wondering what he meant by generative combat. He picked up on it and explained that today we would be testing the game's single player mode. He said the game was able to generate new levels every time we played. It was clear most of the group was skeptical. We had seen other games with procedurally generated quests. After Zane was done with his spiel, I clicked on the single player icon. The game spared no time in getting to the point. Objective! Eliminate belligerents! Use of force is authorized! I chuckled at how serious games took themselves nowadays. Although we had seen the multiplayer maps yesterday, I stared at the screen in wonder, looking over the detailed intricacies of the image on display. The game was truly photorealistic. Of course, there were typical special effects and filters that made the game pop, but after I went into the settings and removed most of the enhancements, it really did look lifelike. Immediately, I was impressed. Everything seemed so fluid. The game had dropped me in the middle of nowhere, a flashing blip in the distance, targets in bold red. It was in first person, but everything felt so natural. It seemed like whatever I conceived of doing, the game would let me do. I couldn't believe how seamless the parkour animations were. When I climbed a tree outside of the village, I scouted the area. There was no other than a few NPCs around a fire. It didn't seem like they had any pattern at all. I thought it must have been the new AI tools allowing so many animations. I wasn't really feeling like a tryhard at the moment and wanted to see what the game was made of. I decided to forego the objective and just wander around. When I began to walk towards the hills in the distance, the game began to coach me back to the objective. 
Leaving mission area. Leaving mission area. Lame. Eventually, my character turned around automatically, refacing towards the objective markers. I reluctantly walked towards the men around the fire. I didn't recognize where the game was supposed to be taking place. They wore generic-looking Middle Eastern garb and spoke a language I had never heard. Suddenly, the men stood up in shock and pointed to my character. What they were saying is ineligible to me, but suddenly the game translated into English. I remembered seeing a similar mechanic in some older game. Tie him up! Tie the bastard up! He's one of them! I can tell. Look at his eyes! I wondered what the lore of the game was about. For a generative mission, the dialogue was kind of interesting. He's the same one as the one we saw last month. Kill him! Kill him! Kill them! The men seemed panicked. I was really impressed by the voice acting. I wondered if this was also generative, as I heard big studios were now using AI to voice characters. Suddenly, one of the men picked up a shotgun from behind me and began to blast my character. Critical! 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 I began to laugh at how ridiculous it was. I looked around the room at the other players, who all seemed deeply immersed in their missions. I was surprised to see that everyone's level looked completely different. How many assets were in the game? Game over appeared, only this one was unique. A stern-looking woman in a ponytail and glasses scorned me from a secondary window in the corner of the screen. Come on, try harder, he got away. The second screen faded. I hated when games did this. I had heard of developers using frustration in the equation when trying to find that perfect addictive game loop formula, but it still peeved me off. Just then, Zame walked over. Hey buddy, come on now, we're not paying you to make footage for a gag video. I want you to actually play the game. He sounded a little passive-aggressive. Die, dirtbag! I heard one of the guys yell from across the room. Apparently he was enjoying it. I saw another laughing his head off. Look at their reactions! I'm teabagging the mark, look at him! He was almost in tears. A few of the other gamers looked and started laughing. Have fun, but play the game. Zane said, encouragingly, noticing the players on the other side of the room cracking up. Yeah, yeah, alright Zane, I said, sort of annoyed. Micromanagement much? The next few days, a few of us expected to play multiplayer, but Zane said to keep testing the single player mode. Some sighed, but the others were already logged in and loading up, eager to play. I didn't know if Zane was rubbing me the wrong way, but after he got off my case the day before, I didn't really care for the game. I mean, it was incredible, but I started to notice it was a little too focused on details and not enough on the fun. For every few missions where I was able to go in and just fight a bunch of enemies, there was an equal amount of slow reconnaissance levels, where the game would basically force you to play exactly as it wanted. For instance, there were enemies detected, it would not let you even leave cover. It was just kept saying something about how failure was imminent. A few of us complained, but Zane said it was all for the sake of realism, and we would grow to appreciate it. After lunch, Zane unveiled a leaderboard and said whoever was at the top of the end of the day would get a thousand dollar bonus. I was impressed, but I basically knew that wasn't ever going to be me. As fun as the game could be, the playstyle just wasn't really my thing. A few of the competitive players took it really seriously, though. It was like they became completely focused on topping the board. It wasn't just the stealth missions that bothered me. For one, every mission it seemed like the movement and aiming settings changed slightly. It was fine, but had the devs never heard of customization? I also started to find the UI and voice companion really annoying, 
It was like they would reprimand me if I didn't play the game exactly how it wanted. I talked to the others about it, but they all seemed to be enjoying it. What really bothered me though, and I didn't tell them then, but the game felt too realistic. I mean, I had grown up with tons of violent games, but this one was different. Not only were the graphics crazy good, the animation and dialogue were also so realistic. One mission, I was in some small village in Africa or something. I had to shoot through a bunch of soldiers, but when I got to the target, his dialogue really got to me. I mean, I get it being accurate to life, but this just felt unnecessary. I was about to complete the mission when the character model spread his arms in the air and said, WAIT! He looked at me dead in the eyes, and, and I swear, it was the realest expression I had ever seen. And I don't just mean in a game. He was sobbing, and his voice was hoarse. Suddenly, he said, I have a son, please! To be honest, it freaked me out. I just wanted to be done with the mission. I stared at the screen for 20 seconds while the NPC just sat there crying. It was uncanny valley territory. Suddenly, he got up to run. I didn't want to hear Zane complain about me not playing properly, so I shot him as he was jumping out a window. The thing that really messed me up, though, was when he started to cry out a name. My boy, Ambibola, Ambibola, he was shouting. I recoiled at the screen. Did they have to make this so graphic? I would definitely bring this up to Zane. Mission passed appeared on the screen in big bold letters with a tally of my score. A+. Plus. I watched as my name moved up the leaderboard to second place. Huh? Maybe I could get used to the game. For the next week, all of us played with fervor. I adapted to some quirks and was actually getting quite good, as I played different weapons were unlocked and I never saw the same mission. I mean, of course some of them were very similar, but they were all somewhat unique. We played Battle Royale most of the time, but we would complete at least a few solo missions a day. I rarely saw Zane when I did, he was generally on the phone, talking in a hushed voice. I figured he must have been busy, as the game was probably nearing release. At least, that is what I had thought, until... That day was different. After we finished playing the Royale mode, I loaded up the single player. The game said it was a harder difficulty level than usual. I had to infiltrate a compound and take out their leader. It didn't seem too difficult. I weaved through the corridors and stealthily dragging bodies away from detection. Finally, I reached the objective, some type of boardroom or office. My character slowly opened the door. Then something happened I hadn't seen before. Someone had slipped up behind my character and tied me up. I watched as my player was bound to a chair. Then a strict-looking woman in a beret walked into the room, gesturing to the door. They slammed it shut. I couldn't believe that was what I was seeing in-game and not cinematic. She leaned in close to the camera. Listen to me closely. You, yes, you, you, spineless coward. You killed a lot of my men back there. Do they at least pay you well? She spit on my character with vitriol. I recalled the oddly realistic mission from a few days ago. We've got five minutes. Five. Do you hear me? We were able to hack into your connection remotely. Apparently they don't trust you enough to run a mission alone. How does that make you feel, watching your every move? You must be real loyal. The dialogue was going on for quite a while. I figured it was a scripted mission, but was starting to get confused. I looked around the lounge, but others completely focused, blasting away. Zane was nowhere to be seen. Say something, she yelled, tossing a cabinet over in anger. I stared stunned at the screen. Was there a dialogue option? Boss, I don't think they're fitted with two-way communication, a second voice said from across the room. 
Hmm, he must be able to do something. Nold if you can heal me, she said. I stared around the screen in disbelief. Was I supposed to move the camera around? I did. Listen, you worm. Why don't you come out of hiding and see me face to face instead of hiding behind these killing machines? Do you have no honor, no integrity? I was dumbfounded. Was this mission for real? This made no sense. Killing machines? We were playing as some kind of mech or something? My thoughts chugged along, struggling to connect. If someone was looking at me right in the eyes, then they would have heard the old dial-up tone as they peered back into a blank stare. It was like then a train hit me. Is this who you work for? She was holding up a picture of Zane. I knew it then. I couldn't actually understand it conceptually, but somehow I knew it. This game, it wasn't a game. There were real people. I thought of the man calling out the name of his son. I couldn't breathe. My ears started ringing. I could hardly see through the water pooling in my eyes. I started to shake my mouth violently up and down. It's Zang, she said bitterly. Innocent people's lives are at stake here. Do you have no remorse? Again, I shook the mouse rapidly. You have remorse? She said in disbelief. So, okay, so tell us then. Tell us, where is Zayn? Is he in Aisha? She said. I shook the mouse left and right. Middle East? I continued. This isn't going to work, and she said, and she suddenly cut my hand loose. I am going to give you this gun, and we're going to leave the room. You are going to spell out for me where you are with bullets. Got it? Try anything, and I will find you and gut you. I nodded, scanning the room around me. Nobody aware of the fact I was in a crying wreck in the corner of the lounge. I looked up the coordinates of where I was online and sprayed them into the wall, writing like I had done in countless games before. Only this time, lives at stake. Longitude, insert number here. Latitude, insert number here. And I closed the program. Zane entered the room, looking directly at me, and walked over. Done for the day? Yeah, I, my hands are acting up. I could barely speak. I felt like the room was closing in. Suddenly, Zane got a call. His brow furrowed as he put his ear in the phone. Everybody, we gotta pack it up, he yelled, more ferociously than we had ever heard. Now. Everyone eventually snapped out of it and made their way out of the building, confused. Zane said we were done for the day, and everyone stared at him bewildered. After insisting, they all got into their cars and drove off. I faked walking off and hid behind, hid behind some bushes across the street. I watched as Zane and co. loaded everything into black trucks. I wasn't scared out of my wits, I would have said it was impressive. They peeled off in less than five minutes. From out of nowhere, several vehicles skidded into the parking lot. Black cloud of figures and barraclaves armed with assault rifles rushed the building. They didn't look like an any, any agency I had ever seen, but they were gone almost as soon as they had arrived. Zane was gone. Everyone was pretty shocked when they realized the devs had disappeared. They complained on Discord for weeks about how it was the best game they had ever played, and they couldn't wait for the release date. Some wondered if the company had gone bankrupt, but we all had our checks deposited. I still haven't spent a dollar of it. Most of the time, I just stare out of the window, thinking about what I've done. Did any of them realize what we did? We were all cold-blooded killers now. They weren't the least bit aware. Or were they? Their laughs haunting me, remembering as they tormented NPCs, hysterical as they danced on the bodies, and worse. I can barely bring myself to remember. They must have known. They must have. I've tried to sleep, but I can't. 
Every night, all I can see is the face of the man in the African village, crying out the name of his son. Ambibola, Ambibola. I don't play games anymore.